Welcome everyone to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2018. Whether you're a family member Whether you're a family member, a friend, a teacher, or a graduating senior tonight, this is a special event that none of us present will ever forget. Graduation is a special time for us because it symbolizes the end of one chapter of our lives and the beginning of another. So as we turn the page and start our next adventure, I'd like to take a moment to remember what made the years leading up to this point very memorable. Radnor is a very special place with lots of opportunities that other kids dream of. Things like open campus and a wide variety of courses available have given us the best opportunities to see it in college and in the world beyond. The staff of Radnor are the best of the best. I've gotta say, I've never seen someone jump on a desk the way Mr. Torresani does. The staff here do an amazing job, and all the seniors graduating tonight are a reflection of not only the hard work of the students themselves, but the teachers and administrators that have an enormous impact on our everyday lives. So as Ferris Bueller once said on his miraculous day, life moves pretty fast, and if you don't stop and look once in a while, you just could miss it. So take time today and look around and embrace your success. Congratulations, everyone. And now, uh, I have the distinct honor of introducing the treasurer of the class of 2018, Viviana Giangrasso. Thank you, Jack. I remember the first time Macy ran for student government, she asked me to help her write her speech. I agreed, we talked about it, and in the end, she took none of my advice and ended up writing a pretty weird story about a cardboard box. Regardless, she won that election. I think that story is pretty telling of Macy's overall disposition. She's never been afraid to take a risk or do something out of the box. With that fearless mentality, there is no doubt in my mind that Macy's future is incredibly bright. And with that, it is my honor to introduce to you my best friend and your executive director, Miss Macy Plotkin. Thank you, Viviana, for the kind introduction. Before I begin, I have to apologize in advance for breaking one of the cardinal rules of technology that I was taught at Radnor. Don't tell anyone your computer password. For years, my go-to password for almost everything was 2018, 2018. I was given this password in first grade, 
and even after I was told to change it, 2018 was the most complex password that I could think of. It's true. As an elementary schooler, 2018 was light years away. To me, saying 2018 is in the near future was like saying, tomorrow I'm going to vacation on Mars. It was impossible to my first grade self. Flash forward to my freshman year, on the day of graduation, my homeroom teacher, Mr. Rosen, said to us, in three years and eight hours, you will be graduating from high school. Still, all that ran through my head was 2018 is definitely not that soon. And yet here we are, about three years and eight hours later, graduating from high school. In the span of those three years and eight hours, we had one bear warning in Browner Township, numerous snow days, one field house painting, three LM weeks, and one prom. We learned how to drive, figured out our plans for next year, earned our coveted parking spots at school, and most of us turned 18 and gained the right to vote. We have played on sports teams, performed in school productions, and been haunted by due dates for class. In three years and eight hours, we have grown in knowledge and experience, and we have learned what it means to be part of a community. We have thrived in the 14 square miles that Radnor Township School District is comprised of, but in the next three years and eight hours, many of us, many of us will be off living in new places with new people to meet and new things to, exp new things to explore and new people to meet. That being said, the reality holds true that no one really knows what we are getting ourselves into. We might be high school graduates, but some of us are still figuring out laundry, let alone how to live hours away from our families. No one can predict what we will achieve in the next three years and eight hours, but what I do know is that we have blinked our eyes and we have gone from a matching 2018 passwords from graduating from high school. The one day that we have been talking about since age seven or eight has become today. 2018 may no longer be the world's most intricate computer password, but after tonight, we will be able to say that we are proud Radnor alumni. We will have the honor of saying that we attended Radnor High School, and we will be able to live our lives knowing that regardless of where we end up, we will always have a home at 130 King of Prussia Road. I would like to thank the faculty and staff at Radnor High School for creating an environment where students like myself were challenged, educated, and encouraged. Because of all of the wonderful adults at Radnor, my classmates and I have learned what it means to be part of a community. They have helped us to achieve our goals, stand up for what we believe in, and have motivated us to always give 100% in everything that we do. Without the staff at Radnor High School, I would definitely not be where I am today. So thank you for everything that you do and for the community that you helped to create. To my family, I would like to say thank you for helping to shape me into who I am today. Thank you for cheering me on in all things academics and for pushing me to act on what I care about. Additionally, thank you for the many rides to school. <laughs> to the class of 2018, thank you for being the best people to grow up with. Because of you all, I am who I am today. Thank you for making school fun and congratulations on officially being Radnor alumni. In the next three years and eight hours, we will have no idea what we will experience and achieve, but having known you all, I'm sure that it will be nothing short of amazing. Thank you. Now, I'd like to introduce Kyle Addis. I've had the pleasure of knowing Kyle for the duration of my time at Radnor Schools, about 12 years. Within his time at Radnor, Kyle has exemplified what it means to be a dedicated student and he has encouraged his classmates to have fun while working hard. Kyle has served as the captain of the Radnor lacrosse team and the Radnor football team. He is a devoted member of the Radnor Fishing Club, and he serves as the class president for the class of 2018. Within student government, Kyle has been the driving force behind all things senior this year. Next year, Kyle will continue his athletic and academic careers at Franklin and Marshall College, playing football for the FNM diplomats. Having known Kyle, I can honestly say that he's a friend to all and that he goes out of his way to make everyone feel at home within the walls of Radnor High School. Kyle proves that to be cool, you must be kind. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Addis. Thank you, Macy. Before I begin, since we're here in Philadelphia, I think we should start things off with a little Eagles chant. Let's do it. E A E. -A. 
There we go. First, I'd like to thank all the families, friends, teachers, and staff for all your caring and guidance over the years. Your support does not go unnoticed, and we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for all of you. On behalf of our entire class, I'd like to give a very special shout out to our class sponsors, Ms. Mahaley and Mrs. Vergoldi Scott. Thank you for your dedication to our experience, to making our experience at Radnor unforgettable over the past four years. And to my classmates, thank you for, put, for putting up with my frequent Facebook and Instagram posts. Your cooperation and enthusiasm over the past four years has really brought us together as a class, which we should all be proud of. It has been an absolute honor to lead you as class president for our senior year, an experience I will forever be grateful of. So, as a token of my appreciation, I have gotten you all a little graduation gift. If you take a second to look at the left leg of your seat, you will see I have left a pencil for each one of you. I hope this pencil doesn't remind you of the hundreds of Scantron tests you filled out or the in-class essays you had to write at Radnor. That pencil in your hand has the potential to draw a line 35 miles long, write 45,000 words, live through 17 sharpenings, delete its own errors, and doodle stick figures when you should be taking notes in class. Pencils have been a vital resource in our success. That is, that is if you remember to bring one to class every day. Pencils are a tool that tend to be taken for granted, but in reality can symbolize our own lives as well. During our years at Radnor, we've begun sharpening our pencils and writing our life stories. Since our rainy days at Camp Canadensis, we've come together as a class and have never looked back. We've walked into Wayne on Fridays after middle school, and ran to the cafeteria on Maritza's infamous muffin days. We celebrated two Villanova championships on Lancaster Avenue and partied hard at the Super Bowl parade following the Eagles' underdog win over the Patriots. We've dreaded Mr. McBride's math test and never dared to cross the math department's yellow line. We were all stressed when, while figuring out plans for next year and have accomplished great things on the stage, the field, and in the classroom. But we have not yet solved the ping pong ball mystery that circulated through the senior class this spring. We will miss Mr. Kim rapping in class, but we won't mind escaping the frigid temperature of Mr. Capone's classroom. We missed a lot of school due to the snow and were thoroughly entertained by Ken Batcher's frequent calls. We've experienced four unforgettable LM weeks and we're always amused by the shenanigans of the Radnor Ruckus at every sporting event. We pulled off the greatest senior cookout in Radnor history and a senior prank that left a few teachers a little salty. <laughs> the memories and friendships we've made together over the years are priceless. Every one of us will have a special connection to one another for the rest of our lives as Radnor graduates. As we sit here today, our pencils sharpened and erasers whole, endless blank pages lie ahead, waiting for us to fill them. You will experience a painful sharpening from time to time, which you will need to become a better person. You will be able to correct any mistakes you might make with your eraser, and you will be able to write whatever stories you may dream of. Through the good times and the bad, never forget the most important part of you will always be what's on the inside just like the lead inside our pencils. As we move forward in our lives, no matter where your journey may take you, keep sharpening that pencil and writing your story. This may be the end of our Radnor chapter, but the rest of our stories are just beginning. Always remember, wherever you go from here, never forget to leave your mark. Congratulations, class of 2018. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dan Bechtold, the principal of Radnor High School. This evening, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, 
Mr. John Roche. A proud alumnus and member of the Radnor High School Hall of Fame, John was an actor during his time at RHS. After graduating from Radnor, John earned a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Film at New York University. His career in film took off when he was accepted into the American Film Institute as a directing fellow. As fate would have it, a fellow filmmaker asked John if he could help with the sound on a film that she was working on, and that was his first taste of Foley. John never looked back from there. John is known as one of the top Foley artists in the country and has worked in the film business for over 40 years. Foley artists create the sound effects that help to bring our favorite feature films and video games to life. During his illustrious career, Mr. Roche has won nearly a dozen awards in his field, including the Career Achievement Award at the Motion Picture Sound Editor's 60th Golden Reel Awards. Roche was the first Foley artist in history to receive this coveted award. Over his career, John has worked on over 500 feature films. I'll name a couple films for you, but I doubt you've heard of many of these. E.T., The Breakfast Club, Back to the Future, Schindler's List, Braveheart, The Matrix Trilogy, The Hangover, Inception, and even Frozen. His video game credits include series such as God of War, Tekken, Halo, and Final Fantasy. Has anyone ever heard of any of these? Nobody? I didn't think so. Most recently, John's worked on a couple films such as Despicable Me 3, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Moana, Finding Dory, Captain America Civil War, Black Panther, and Avengers Infinity War. As he looks back on his career, one of the movies John is most proud to have worked on was a small flick known as Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. Mr. Roche is currently the lead Foley artist at Skywalker Sound, Prior to this position, John was the lead Foley artist at Warner Brothers for 23 years. Please join me in a warm Radnor welcome for our keynote speaker, Mr. John Roche. I have to take that off so uh, I can talk to you. But, uh you might re recognize that from uh, Star Wars. Real quick, uh, hello and shout out to Brian, Dale, and Marianne. And um, good afternoon, and thank you the members of the board, Superintendent Bachelor, Principal Bechtold, members of the faculty, the student government, family, friends, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2018. Standing before you is living proof that a C minus student can make it. <laughs> Although, don't go for that level, okay? I graduated in 72 when dinosaurs roamed the earth, or as Yoda would say, when 900 years old you reach, look as good you will not. I've been lucky to have a career in life that has filled me with happiness, both spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. I wish the same for you all and more. So since I began with a Star Wars quote, let us use that as our template for our talk together. Quote, stay on target. Gold Five said this. The obvious connotation is don't miss. Keep your mind focused and don't be distracted by anything unnecessary. When you're doing something, do it 100%. Apply it to the little things. When you make your bed in the morning, take an extra amount to do it right. I'm not saying get it to the point where you bounce a quarter off it, if you want to do that, go for it. But I'm just saying, pay attention to the little things and do them well. Typically then, the big things will fall into place. And this is tied in with attitude. Attitude is the ruler of all, in a sense. You have the choice, as soon as you open your eyes in the morning, to tell yourself, I'm going to have a good day, come what may. A great attitude is a force multiplier 
and it can make life easier and more pleasant for you and all around you. By having a great attitude, it will be much easier to stay on target. Cover me, Porkins. Biggs Darklighter, aka Red Six, was covering Luke as his wingman and kept his position during Luke's bombing run. In not flinching, when faced with intense stress, he had Luke's back. You will be presented with various wing people throughout your life. Some of them may even be sitting next to you right now. Now, how do you know if they'll really be there when you need them? Actions. Always speak louder than words. Words, words are easy. Actions can be difficult. This is also a two-way street. Had Luke been on Biggs' wing and Biggs done the run, Biggs would have expected Luke to protect him. Trust is earned by your actions, and to that end, you need to be honest. Honest with yourself and with others. With honesty, your friends and family and significant others can rely on you when going gets tough, and at times it will. This is just a part of life. During these times and all others, be honest. Because without honesty, there can be no integrity. Again, smaller things leading to bigger things. In fact, we can distill down honesty's being telling the truth to everyone else, whereas integrity is telling the truth to oneself. By the way, shocker, nobody owes you anything. Respect being number one. You must earn it. And you earn it by saying what you're going to do and then doing what you said you'll do. Under promise and over deliver. Remember, cover me, Porkins. A lot of people like to do certain things, but they're not that good at it. Keep going through the things you like to do until you find something that you actually seem to be extremely good at. It could be anything. Those are George Lucas's words, and they're words to live by. Do everything you can while you're young. When your optimism and resilience are at their peak, failure has no meaning. If you want to try something, now is the time. If it doesn't work, you can and will regroup and try again. You know, people always say to you, boy, your photographs are the best, or you're much faster at math than I am, or animals always seem to gravitate to you. <clears throat> Listen to what those people are saying. They're telling you honestly, and without a hidden agenda, what you're good at, which may be a good starting point. But don't, I repeat, don't, do a job merely because your parents or anyone else may say you should, if your instincts tell you it doesn't seem like a good fit. In other words, if deep down you know something is definitely the wrong path, listen to your intuition. Yes, like Luke disabling the targeting computer in favor of the force in his final run on Death Star. Compassion, which I define as unconditional love, is essential to a Jedi's life. So you might say that we are encouraged to love. Anakin Skywalker. Be unfailingly patient and always kind to everyone. Kindness is not a weakness. It's a strength. It doesn't preclude being firm or resolute. It means you seek a win-win. Not a win-lose, not a lose-win, or a lose-lose. If you're on a date, notice how your date treats the restaurant server. If you're a CEO, make it a point to know all your employees and their names, birthdays, and their family information. Not only is it good business, it's the right thing to do. Any film director would come on a set and address the production assistant by his or her first name and offer them thanks for getting them coffee, you knew immediately it was going to be a great set to work on. <clears throat> In any business, if an upper management person scoffs at you for doing something like this, watch them carefully. You don't want to be a mere boss, you want to be a leader. A boss cracks his whip and says, do that. A leader will ask how they can help you and the team achieve their goals to everyone's long-term benefit. He or she will inspire you and allow the spark of creativity to glow for all to see. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Luck is really the chemical reaction between preparation and opportunity. If you want to be lucky, be prepared. In the film business, if the morning's call time is 9 o'clock, you're on time if you get to the stage by 8.30. <laughs> How about that? Otherwise, you're late. Why? Because you have a time pad in place, <clears throat> excuse me, in case things go sideways. And getting there early allows you to be totally prepared. If you get the opportunity to do something that may not quite be in your wheelhouse, but nevertheless intriguing, go for it, unless illegal or immoral. You might never get the chance again. You can call this a version of luck. 
I would not have the career I have today if I had not tried something a little different from what I thought I wanted and was educated to do. If you want to be successful in a particular field, perseverance is one of the key qualities. George Lucas. Never, never, never give up. Keep putting one foot in front of the other and believe in yourself. Be bold and take risks. This goes for careers, salaries, and love. In love, there's no perfect person. Everyone has baggage. It is unfair to anyone else for you to believe that he or she is perfect or the one and only. No one can maintain that facade forever. You will resent them when you finally accept the truth that they are not perfect, and it will be your fault, not theirs, because you allowed yourself to create an unsustainable fantasy that no one can live up to. Accept people for what they are, and they will surprise you in their capacity for love. There's always a bigger fish, Qui-Gon Jinn. Takeaways, never compare your insides to somebody else's outsides. There's always going to be greater pe lesser people than you. But there's only one you. Don't fall into the trap of wanting bigger, better, faster for the sake of merely having. The colleague gets a promotion, and you don't. Don't despair. Be happy for them. You never know how your path will develop. I mean, have faith in yourself. Be mindful of the future, but not at the expense of the moment. Qui-Gon Jinn again. All of you out there have plans, hopes, and dreams. This is a wonderful moment for you. But make sure you just don't live for the future. Yes, you need to study, take a meeting, look down, right? Remember to be here now. Not to be morbid, but people that were dying were asked if they had any regrets. They all had similar answers. I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. I wish I let myself be happier. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Leah Aragana. This line encapsulates the spirit of the entire rebellion against the Empire and the appeal of the Star Wars universe. And the key word is hope. In fact, when George Lucas re-released the first Star Wars film, he subtitled A New Hope. This one word speaks to who all of you are out in the audience. You are the hope, the future for yourselves, your friends, family, country, and society. A society that needs good, committed, compassionate citizens more than ever. Don't lose sight of the power of this one word, for you'll be tested in ways that will seem unfair, unkind, and from time to time bring on the why me moments. Stop what you're doing and look at what you do have. Always have hope. This leads us to a noted computer scientist and professor at Carnegie Mellon University, Randy Pausch, who's passed. He said, time is all you have. This is the only quote I make that's not from the Star Wars universe, not from a galaxy far, far away, but I include it because it could very well be the most important. Unfortunately, I'm getting to the end of my warranty, whereas your hourglass is still nearly full. Each grain of sand in that hourglass is precious, but they cannot be hoarded. They'll get used one way or another, so make them all count. It is ironic to think from the moment we are born we begin to die. I don't say this to be maudlin. I, emphasize, I say this to emphasize that you have a choice each and every day how to fill your life. I've touched many topics, but if nothing else, go out today and every day and have the courage to love fiercely. Be true to yourself. Stay in touch with friends. And above all, let yourself be happy. Excuse me. Yeah, George. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting there, okay? Yeah, okay, thanks. What pain. George and I both say, may the force be with you, always. Thank you. John, thank you so much for your words. Thank you so much for taking the time to come from California to join us today. You are truly a Jedi of graduation speakers, so thank you. <laughs> uh, 
I'm Ken Batchelor, the superintendent, very proud superintendent of Radnor Township School District. It is a journey that brought us here today. It has been a wonderful journey filled with successes and challenges. It is a journey that so many have played a role in supporting and guiding and educating and caring for the class of 2018. To the parents, families here today, to celebrate with your children, our district can't thank you enough for being your child's first teacher. Thank you also for all the time that you have dedicated to support our district. We couldn't have done it without you. To the faculty, administration, staff, from kindergarten to high school, it is your care, it is your emphasis on unlocking the potential in all of our students each day that has brought us here today. Thank you for all your efforts. To members of the school board that are here today, both our current members and past members who have children graduating, thank you so much for being willing to dedicate and volunteer your time to make sure that the Radnor education and to support the Radnor education to make sure it's the best it can be, so thank you. And to the Radnor class of 2018, I can't believe you're leaving me. I feel like we were just beginning to get to know one another. I know I've only been your superintendent for a year and a half now, but why are you leaving? Was it my snow messages? I gave you so many snow days. We even did one in honor of your executive director's birthday. You know, for Macy, we even called a snow day on her birthday. Student council still owes me for that one, I think. We're gonna miss this class. I'm gonna miss this class. My remarks today were inspired by two members of the class, Yana Flores and Zach Quinn. At baccalaureate on Friday night, they performed a selection of John Mayer's songs. I didn't realize singer and songwriter John Mayer is still popular with you guys. Another reason why I like you. Your performance made me think of another John Mayer song that is a favorite of mine titled, No Such Thing. In the song, John says, or Mr. Meyer, Mayor, I guess I should say, but John says, I want to run through the halls of my high school. I want to scream at the top of my lungs. I just found out that there's no such thing as the real world, just a lie that you have to rise above. We, the educators in your life, we may have contributed to that lie. When you went through elementary school, we warned you about the middle school. And then when you went through middle school, we warned you about being ready and prepared for the next step when you get to high school. In high school, we warned you about college and the real world. Yet I would argue that the real world, and similar to John Mayer, the real world is all around you and has been all around you. Through your school years here in Radnor, you have been living in the real world. You have faced adversity. You have overcome challenges. You've navigated friendships, some more difficult than others. You have been intellectually challenged. You have seen the impact of your decisions, both negative and positive. You've learned that procrastinating really doesn't work and that you're not always going to get a snow day to bail you out, even though you did have a lot this year. Your time in Radnor has you well prepared. Don't let people tell you this isn't the real world. This is the real world because the real world isn't a destination. The real world is a journey. It is a journey which you have been on and you will now continue. Your journey through elementary, middle, and high school has you well prepared for your next steps. When taking time to see the real world as a wonderful journey, filled with successes and hardships, we are able to truly value and identify what matters most in life. And I think John pointed out some of those things as well. Your journey in the real world now continues beyond the walls of Radnor. As a Radnor alumni, you always have a place here and are part of the Radnor community forever. As you continue your journey in this real world, remember the lessons you have learned and never stop learning. Learning and growing 
is part of all our lives. Your Radnor experience has not only taught you the importance of learning and education, it has also taught you the importance of community. There is nothing we can't achieve when we work together. When we are kind and nice to one another, even though we may not agree, our community flourishes. Continue to work hard, make that bed every day, and care for one another. Our community and nation needs caring and thoughtful people. You have been living in the real world, and the real world awaits your next steps. I wish you all the best. Please come back and visit us. Visit us often. Congratulations, Class of 2018. It's now my pleasure to introduce your class valedictorian, Niles Wang. As one would expect, Niles' range of interests and accomplishments is impressive. During his time at Radnor High School, he served as co-president of the math club and participated in the Annenberg Science Symposium. He also played clarinet and just won a state championship as a member of the Ultimate Frisbee team this year. Both our boys and girls teams, I understand, they won state championships this year, which is a wonderful accomplishment. And congratulations. Niles also enjoys taking part in math competitions as a member of the Lehigh Valley math team. He has participated in the American Regional Math League, Harvard MIT math tournament, and Princeton University math competition. Earlier this year, he learned he was one of only 511 students in the world to earn every point possible on an advanced placement exam. Niles, <laughs> Niles' perfect score was on the AP Computer Science exam. Niles has also been a Boy Scout since sixth grade and is classically trained in piano. He will attend the University of Chicago it is my pleasure to welcome the Radnor High School Class of 2018 valedictorian, Niles Wang. Thank you, Mr. Bachelor, for the introduction. Let me begin by expressing my gratitude to the teachers, administrators, and parents here who have done so much to make all of this happen. And especially to my, my very own parents, who deserve so much credit for whom I've become and everything I've achieved. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my sister, Bailey, who is somewhere in here. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> and I would also like to thank all of you in the audience in advance for listening and bearing with me, because for most of you, this is prob I'll probably speak the longest time here. I've never really given a speech before, so I struggled a lot on what to say. I had a few ideas, but they, they just didn't work out. On Sunday night, I reluctantly scrapped what I had, and and then I started thinking, thinking about dirt. <laughs> Several months ago, I was playing a game of ultimate frisbee. For those of you unfamiliar with the sport, and yes, apparently it is a sport, uh, it involves one team trying to pass a frisbee disc to an end zone to score a goal, and another team whose goal is trying to knock that disc down to the ground. I, especially considering my, uh, my vertically challenged state, found it best to purposefully dive to the ground to try to block low throws. The game we were playing was long, and it was a hot day. 
Frustration mounted on both sides. My team was on defense, and I can remember the guy I was covering, he was running for the disc, and I tried to dive for it. I missed, and he ended up catching the disc, but he was still very annoyed. And I mean, very annoyed. Because afterwards, he yelled with such furiosity. He told me to, to eat dirt. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what can I say? I was, I was mildly offended by this remark. But, but the rest of the team seemed quite amused. The phrase, eat dirt, quickly caught on. From that time onward, whenever someone dove to the ground to try to make a play, that person was eating dirt. So, what does this have to do with anything? I suppose our phrase, eat dirt, began as an ironic term of affection, but I, being inclined to overthinking, overthought about it. Why do people look down on dirt? I suppose it's because it's so common with, with everything mixed into it. It's everything we are not. Inanimate, unthinking, unsophisticated. But just think about it. Without dirt, you would not be standing. Without dirt, there would be no plants, no cows, no pigs. We would all starve. And when, you're, when your time finally comes, your body returns to the earth. So as you can see, we scorn dirt far more than it really deserves. In the common sense, to eat dirt means to stoop low and, and face humiliation. But it could mean so many other, other positive things as well. When that gentleman, gentleman, if you could call him that, told me to eat dirt, that was an insult. But later on, I started thinking to myself, hmm, maybe, maybe I do want to eat dirt. <laughs> no longer was the phrase an insult, but a mindset. I had found a mindset to work hard and take risks. If you want to eat dirt, then you want to get your hands dirty. And we've all been there before, whether receiving a bad test grade and then reaching out to your teacher for help, or, or watching TV until midnight and then grinding for three hours to complete that English paper due the next day. If you want something, you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to get up and get your hands dirty. If you want to eat dirt, you'll also want your passion to guide you. When someone tells you to eat dirt, they ask you to bend down, stick your nose in the ground, and become an animal. <laughs> but, but animals aren't bad. Animals live by instinct. They don't have inhibitions or self-doubt or self-judgment. We call animals wild. And sometimes we need to be a bit wild. I'm sure all of us can remember a time when we've just gone wild, like, like prom. Personally, I've I've never really been much of a dancer, but let's just say that it's nice to let off some steam every once in a while. <laughs> Sacrifice your own ego. Just go out there, let go of yourself, and just have some fun. If you want to eat dirt, you want to fully commit to a cause and see it through. Put yourself out there and don't care whether you, you succeed or fail. Whether it was trying out for the school play or giving it your all at a sports tournament, 
you've already taken steps by trying. I know it sounds like an inspirational poster, and believe me, I hate those too. But it's true. And you'll know it's true when, when, you're, when you finally taste the fruit of your labor, when you, when you see the hundreds of people streaming in to see that amazing play that everyone's been talking about, or when you finally win that championship that you honestly had no chance, that, that you never expected you had the my, the, even the smallest chance of winning, or, or really, whatever else you succeed in, big and small alike. This graduating class is brimming with talent. I've seen in all of you aspiring songwriters, playwrights, musicians, teachers, doctors, nurses, leaders, entrepreneurs, teachers, journalists, scientists, you name it, it's somewhere out here. Go out there on the field and don't be afraid to get some dirt on your ego. Wear it as a badge of honor. Eating dirt isn't pleasant. It tastes gritty, bitter, sometimes dry, but, but always just like dirt. <laughs> Trust me, I know this from, from personal experience, if you, if you know what I mean. I know, dirt, eating dirt just isn't pleasant. But think of it this way. If you don't eat dirt, you're never really in the game. Whether you know it or not, we've all been eating dirt for the past 12 years, pushing ourselves and expanding our limits. Look at us now. Look at how far we've come. Who knows, if we keep on eating dirt, just imagine, where will each of us be in 20 years? Let us answer that question boldly. Class of 2018, eat dirt. Thank you, Niles. Niles, I want to speak to you later, find out what team that was against originally, and I want to find that player who originally said that to you and make him listen to your speech, I think. <laughs> Next, I'm happy to congratulate and introduce your class salutatorian, Alex Leonardi. Alex's accomplishments and activities are likewise varied and impressive. Alex was president of the Radnor High School Model United Nations Club, captain of the Radnor High Q team, and a member of the Radnor Ethics Bowl and National Honor Society. Most recently, Alex was one of 630 students nationally and one of only 18 in Pennsylvania to be named a 2018 U.S. Presidential Scholar semifinalist. Alex also has many interests outside of school. He can speak Farsi and Italian, plays guitar, and enjoys computer programming. To top it off, he will attend Harvard in the fall. Yes, Alex is a pretty incredible teenager, and I'm not just saying that because he has a black belt in Taekwondo, Karate, and Aikido. I want to make sure, are you comfortable? Everything's good? Do you need water? Whatever I can get you, please let me know. It is my pleasure to welcome the Radnor High School Salutatorian for the class of 2018, Alex Leonardi. Thank you for the kind introduction, Mr. Bachelor, and thank you, Niles, for that incredible speech. So, recently, I've been looking back at what's happened over the years. I've been thinking about all the choices we've made that brought us here, and what would have happened if we had acted differently? 
how that could have changed our fate. There's a theory called determinism, and essentially, it says that everything that has ever happened and will ever happen has already been determined, and that there is only one possible outcome for our future. Though this may seem a little ridiculous to some of us,、uh, it actually has vast scientific support, more so than many arguments in favor of our free will. It posits that if we knew the location of every particle in the universe and the laws that govern them, we would know the cause and effect of every event from that point, even of our own fates. I have great respect for science, but the idea that there's only one path forward is just—it it does just feels wrong. Think about all the times you've had to choose between attending practice for a sport or an instrument after school, or finishing up the day's math homework. Or the times you've had to choose between getting started on that paper that was due the next day, or taking an extended break to watch Netflix, YouTube, or just text your friends. These choices were very real and bore very real consequences. Sometimes for the better, and other times for the worse. So to think that these choices were really no choice at all is somewhat absurd, and that's why we should all heed that. Timeless advice we've heard when taking multiple choice tests: Don't overthink it. Go with your gut, and our guts should tell us that there is more to life than waiting for choices to be made for us. I often look to the last stanza of William Ernest Henley's poem *Invictus* for inspiration. It reads: It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. What really strikes me about that quote is that it doesn't just affirm that we can influence our destiny; it also suggests that there is something more to our experience than just the material; that we all have a soul that transcends physicality. Think back to the feelings of jubilance and warmth when you spend time with those who are close to you. Think back to L.M., where the spirit in the air was palpable and moved us in a way we couldn't quite describe. It's moments like these that really touch the soul. But one thing Invictus gets wrong is the subject. It uses I when it should use we. There is no one player on any sports team, no one musician in the band, no one delegate in Mall United Nations who can wholly shape its destiny. No one person can forge fate. It is our interactions with teammates, classmates, and friends that brought us here, and it goes far beyond just us, class of 2018. Testament to that are the people sitting behind me and the people sitting around you. The teachers, coaches, sponsors, administrators, families, and everyone who makes Radnor what it is—they have helped make us what we are. And we have all contributed to making Radnor's soul. Whether it's the energy that flows through the ruckus, or the passion that emanated from every performance at Baccalaureate, we know how Radnor feels. And that feeling of Radner is a gift that will remain with us forever. So, was it fated that both the boys and the girls' ultimate frisbee teams would be state champions this year? Was it fated that we would beat LM for the sixth year in a row? And was it fated that we would all be sitting here, after over a decade of school, surrounded by the people who have helped us through our journey, preparing to write the next chapters in the story of our lives? Perhaps. But if it truly was fated, that fate was not determined by some collisions between a few particles. That fate was willed into existence, crafted by each and every one of us through hard work and determination, guided by the inspiration of our souls. Class of 2018, go trek forward into the future, master your fates, and always carry with you that soul which we have shaped together. Thank you and congratulations. And now, for the purposes of awarding diplomas, Mr. Bachelor and members of the school board, I present to you. The class of 2018.
Kyle William Addis. John Robert Bell. Viviana Daniela John Grasso. Philip John Gilbert. Nicole Afriye Abwaje. Maya Serene Abuzara. Meredith Grace Adair. Nicholas John Adams. Layla Saeed Alabrawi. Robert John Amarant. Robert Aiden Archibald. Jarrell John Asbury. Shedin Atakan Atilasoy. Luke Kwan K. Al. Finnegan Soames Babcock. Singwan Beck. <laughs> Kenneth Scott Baker. <laughs> Grayson Beck Beezer. <laughs> Christopher Aki Barkley. Adriana Yvette Dantzler. Raven M. Bass Reed. Caroline Blaze Bonnenberger. <laughs> Kaylee Barbara Batanti. <laughs> Elsie Marie Blair. Catherine Faye Belville. <laughs> Candace Whitaker Booker. <laughs> Evelyn Grace Bond. Raid Siobhan Brogan. Yeah. 
Justin Daniel Borowski. Margaret Elizabeth Bynum. Jared Evan Brakeiron. Olivia Sherry Boris. Daniel Skelly Bullock. Claire Mackenzie Burton. Rowan Kathleen Bradley. Ryan James Bird. John Francis Callahan. Adele Francis Cairns. John Fillmore Cameron. Hunter David Goodboy. Michael Ariel Camordo. Vincent Walter Campanelli. Cahol John Carmody. Julia Dawn Cash. Julian Castilleja the Fourth. Fernando Ingersoll Castro. Guillermo Castro Martinez. Neil Sood Chan. Henry Riley Chance. Anthony Gia Chang. Eric Chang. Emily Yin Chen. Cassandra Brianna Williams. Connor Chris Chang. <laughs> Jessica Rose Chan. <laughs> Ellison Ye Lee Ching. Anna Hojung Choi. <laughs> Natalie Zuris Clark. <laughs> K. 
Caitlin McKenna Collins. William Denver Conran. Elise Bates Conklin. Ryan Phillips Conklin. Isabella Marie Consul. Camille Ian Copeland. Lauren Sophia Marie Corsi. Brendan Edgeworth Crow. Sydney Lauren Dontremont. Maya Vera DeMello. Brian Wynn Dow. Tallulah Joe Derich. Dylan Gabriel Delaney. Cristiano DeMontis. Giancarlo Antonio De Fulvio. Alexa Nicole Di Giovanni. Caroline Ann DeTrolio. Lane Eve Dodge. Jessica Nicole Doherty. Joseph Anthony Donato. Andrew Bischoff Dahan. Kevin Patrick Doyle. Woo! Elena Isabel Duran. Claire Lorraine Dustin. Elizabeth Cynthia Dustin. Carolyn Nicosa Eckstein. Nicholas Lambros Economides. James Michael Alderi. Zachary David Elkins. <laughs> Teresa Elise Ellis. <laughs> Ren Giselle Evans. <laughs> Connor Jacob Fisher.
Joanna Flores. Yana Erin Aviles Flores. Paul Jacob Forte. Jonathan Thornton Fort. Najee Marcus Fowler. Addison Penn Frazier. Alexander Middleton Frey. Charles Andrew Freck. Robert Harrison Frigerio. William Palmer Fritz. Catherine Marie Frost. Margot Pierpont Gaines. Catherine Steiger Gerber. Sophie Katrina Geegan. Matthew Christopher Janella. Chad Stephen Giardinelli. Daniel Joseph Goldberg. Rebecca Karen Goldberg. Carly Ann Goldstein. Jillian Ward Gorman. John Thomas Goslin. Grace Nolan Griffin. Alexander Kabak Han. Isabella Ladonia Hain. Isaiah Hall. <laughs> Eric Michael Halpern. <laughs> Sydney Catherine Hamilton. Graham Glazier Harrington. <laughs> Julia Carter Havertine. <laughs> John McEwen Herschler. <laughs> 
Joaquin Castillon Holero. Minji Hong. Jack David Horvath. Cheng Yao Hu. Niles Harry Huang. Jason Mark Lancaster Hurl. Toma Demitar Yaramboykov. Hope Suzanne Adikula. Henry Theodore Ng. Hannah Louise Jones. Thomas Edwin Jones. Miranda Jones Davidis. Justin Michael Callen. Cameron Karapabani. <laughs> Timothy Robert Kazarina. <laughs> Cassidy Lennon Kearns. Chloe Ann Kerpius. Hojin Kim. Eric Eugene Klein. Callie Francis Klimowitz. Malena Nicole Horzekwa. <laughs> Laurel Jane Colber. <laughs> Rebecca Delaney Kopp. Maria Carolina Kanaib. <laughs> Hameda N. Cooley. <laughs> Juwan Kwan. Robert Pfeiffer Leibel. <laughs> Tessa Janet Landry. Grace Rebecca Lane.
Spencer Hyden Lasky. Samantha Mihan Lee. Zaire Naeem Lee. Alexander Leonardi. Abigail Elaine Lasser. Paige Josephine Lewandowski. Ling Tao Lee. Catherine Michelle Lihoda. John Taras Locasel. Patrick Joseph Lofton. Andrew Anthony Lord. Brian Wan Sing Lo. Brett Patrick Lyons. David Ulrich McPherson. Ainsley McCarris McCrone. Amir Mahmoudi. Michael Francis Mancuso. Daniel Montelato. Fahad Mohammed Manzoor. Allison Paige Margolis. Alexandra Marie Martin. Edward Franklin Martin. Christopher Joseph Massaro. David Henry Massey. Scott Michael Massey. Peter John Masterson. Samantha Paige Maxwell. George Edward May. Malcolm Eugene Mayo. Carson Riley McClure. Brooke Norton McCormick.
Catherine Elizabeth McCullough. Kena McNeil McKenna. Gregory John McNicholas. Mary Catherine McShay. Michael Joseph McShay. George King Meltzer. Jack William Miles. Rebecca Lynn Modell. Camille Ann Mulder. Alina Leona Murph. Jason Pierce Nachman. Asal Omer Nasser. Stefan Alexander Nagoye. James. Henry Niece. Jane Biddle Norris. Timothy Michael North. Catherine Rose O'Sullivan. Anthony Zaran Odom. <laughs> Marcelo June Unishi Milani. Margaret Jean Packer. <laughs> Choi Za. <laughs> Catherine Virginia Helton. <laughs> Beatrice Joanna Pano. Yohanan Tom Peppos. Luke Patrick Pereira Ogan. David Zachary Perot. Ryan Matthew Peter. Adrian Baptiste Villardo Planche. Connor Otis Pierce.
Macy Sophia Plotkin. Benjamin Alexander Pope. Christina Elizabeth Pope. Joseph Brian Purcell. Sahil Manish Harawit. Zachary Joseph Quinn. John Charles Raider the Fourth. Darian Sorki Rafapana. Arnav Ramesh. Anne Hannah Randall. Sarah Ruth Ziegler. Sade Zuri Reed. Catherine Hastings Remfrey. Valencia Rivera. Jonathan Michael Rosado. Elena Ann Rosen. Evan Isaac Rosenberg. Samantha Ellie Rossoff. Chase Marie Rufo. Kieran Patrick Ryan. Amelia Sagatita. Adam Esam Salah. <laughs> Sophie Wei Samaha. Jonathan Robert Schrems. Lauren Marie Schulman. Samuel Harrison Schultz. Len Joseph Seibel. Young Tae So. Yeah. 
Jocelyn Aaron Sirius. James Michael Shea. Awan Chin. Evan Chen. Sean Michael Van Trieste. Junhan Shin. Grant Barnes Stefano. Jameer Stevenson. May Stewart. Yusuf A. Sultan. Charles McCabe Sotherby. Aaron Rafel Tashau. Devin Morgan Tian. Lena Anwar Tawala. Elizabeth Adams Tewksbury. Jerry Yi Zhao. Quinn Ann Tobias. Jack Bernard Triangan. Samuel J. Ullman. Maximilian Todd Westby. Julia Jung Wee. Kelly Sarai Ventura. Ludwin Antonio Ventura. Sarah Shushmitha Vijiswarapu. Lin Yang. Courtney Ann Zajak. Anders Everett Lodeman. Grace Christina Wakiyama. Lauren Alexandra Weishart. Andrew Frank Wheeler.
Let's give a hand for our graduates. I have witnessed graduation for the past three years. From freshman year, when I watched my sister graduate, and it seemed all too far away, to sophomore year, when I learned the tedium of pomp and circumstance, to junior year, when I threw up in front of the entire teacher section right back there. <laughs> Thank you again to Mr. Dunbar, Mr. Drew, Mr. McBride, and Mrs. Lorario for uh, escorting me to the bathroom and to the other teachers who came over just to make sure I was okay or to give me a stick of gum. Now, as a member of the graduating class, I have come to truly appreciate this caring nature of the Radnor community. We were raised in a community of teachers, administrators, parents, and friends that have offered an experience I wish all students could have. It wasn't long ago that we learned to play the recorder called each other's home phones in the summer to find out who was in our class, and got silly bands banned from the middle school. There is a certain air about Radnor. It's the feeling you get from being a Raider. It's the kind of cold air, that feeling of discipline and pure dread when you enter the math department. It's the way that we were affectionately called Strawberry Girl or Pop-Tart Boy in the snack line of the cafeteria. It's the way the time 227 is forever ingrained in our minds. But every Radnor experience is different. We're of a generation connected through social media, a generation that will never see a roadwork ahead sign in the same way. And maybe someday some of us will have lived in three different centuries. It's inspiring to think of the amazing things our graduating class will do in the years to come. Our lives are full of opportunity to leave a triumphant legacy on the world. Dream big. Dream big for the future. Congratulations, Radnor High School, class of 2018. We made it. Now, please stand and join Dr. Glennie and the Meister Singers in singing the Radnor High School alma mater. present to you the graduates of the class of 2018. Yeah.